While that's drying, I'm going over to the barn. And now I'm switching to a flat, half inch flat. And on this, I'm going to use uh, Windsor Red, just Windsor Red. Now you want a flat brush. This is a bright brush. It's as wide as it is long. A flat is a little longer, but you want, the important thing is it has to have a nice sharp point for this technique. So now we're taking the brush and using that point straight up and down. And I'm going to make repeated marks straight up and down on the front of this barn. These are the slats of wood. <clears throat> Try and get some up there in the top too. Just like that. And now down in the, there's a, there's a line that goes through. We'll deal with that in a little bit. But right now, just these straight slats up and down. giving the barn texture. We have a tree here, don't worry about it, just kind of go around it as best you can. And then the other side, now I'm switching over to a bit of uh, Scarlet Lake on this side. Might use a bit of that up in the top as well. Well, my sky is dry enough now that uh, I can uh, work on the foreground. We'll, we'll work on the middle ground uh, in a little bit, but right now I wanna show you a special technique for the foreground. I think you're gonna love this. Um, and it is the trigger sprayer technique. So I have just an ordinary trigger sprayer here uh, and what I'm going to do is spray a path down from on a diagonal from our center of interest, which is the, the, the quilts leading up to the barn. So we want a diagonal coming up into that area. Uh, in order to get a nice soft path down here, this is a great technique. Let me show you how I do it. So I'm going to pick my paper up with a a support under it. I have a plexiglass support and I have a, a just a little tub here. You can do this over a sink or, or something else. But now I'm putting it, I, what I want to do is spray in the direction that I want the path to go. So get water tested in your uh, trigger sprayer and be a little aggressive. Give it a full spray. Don't just tweak it. It won't work that way. So we want to come down you can see the path uh, that the water takes. You can see if you like it or not. Just like that I think is good. And then I'm going to drop a nice mixture of aureolin So I want a nice ochre shade. Uh, Aurelin, Scarlet Lake, and Brown Matter. And what I'm going to do is just drop that into the water that I, and let it flow down. Now this is the just in that area rinsing my breast and quickly going into uh, cobalt blue. Just a soft cobalt blue. It doesn't have to have a lot of color in it. Dropping that right down. I'm going to hold my paper on an angle. I'll get my pan back here so it can drain right into the pan. Trying not to touch the paper too much. Just the tops of the, those sprinkles of water and letting it run down. Let's look at the sketch we have for today. 
I exaggerated something we call the bar theory. And, and that is the division between, well, within a scene in three unequal horizontal parts. So a background, a middle ground, a foreground. We don't want them all to be the same. We want them unequal. In this case, I chose a small background, a middle size middle ground, and a huge foreground. Well, as we paint, I'll talk more about how this exaggeration of the bar theory sets up a dramatic composition for our scene.